Welcome to the vendor training course, Identifying Safety Hazards. In this course, I will discuss common safety hazards found at REO properties and how to address each one. Let's begin. When performing initial services on all properties, make sure you read each work order carefully as each client has different requirements when it comes to completing safety hazards and providing bids. The following are common areas that safety hazards may be found. These safety hazards should be addressed immediately without bidding unless the work order requires a bid. Additionally, it is required that any safety hazards found while completing recurring services are addressed for certain clients. The first safety hazard location we will look at is windows. You must inspect each window, including doors, at the property for broken glass and cracks. All broken glass must be completely removed from the frames, sills, and ground. If any portion of a window is cracked, you are required to tape it with clear tape only. If the window has a large cracker chip that is allowing elements or animals to enter the home, all the glass is to be removed. The window should be boarded and a bid must be submitted to reglaze the window. In order to prevent unwarranted entry to the home, you must ensure all ground level windows are locked or not accessible from the exterior. If a window is nailed shut from the interior or if it is painted shut and secure, you do not need to add window locks to these windows. To learn more about securing windows, check out the Securing Window Locks course. The second safety hazard item to look at is the electrical and or gas items. To prevent any unnecessary electrical accidents from happening, you need to make sure the following electrical items are addressed. All electrical outlets, must have switch plate in or outlet covers, and there should be no exposed wires. If there is no switch or plug in a junction box and just wires, you are required to cap the wires and tuck them into the junction box. You also have to check the gas connection, where no appliance exists. This connection must be capped whether the gas is on or off. When installing a gas cap, make sure you have the proper size cap. Then prepare the pipe for capping by using rolling Teflon tape or putting paste on the pipe. This helps seal the threads in case somebody does not turn on the gas. Next, put the gas cap on, making sure it is snug by either using a pair of channel locks or a pipe wrench. When finished installing, the cap should be tight and the valve should be in the off position. Additionally, all standard size light bulbs at the property must be functioning properly. This includes lights in the attic, basement, garage, outbuildings, and any found on the exterior of the property as well. Once again, this is only limited to standard size light bulbs and does not include candelabra, fluorescent, or halogen lights. You must also take any necessary action to resecure all loose fixtures or ceiling fans. This is only for items that are hanging. Cords that are attached to the property, such as cable cords, telephone lines, or speaker wires, should be rolled and tied. Any low or loose hanging wires in the basement area, crawl spaces, or attics need to be zip tied. Wrap the zip tie around the wire and anchor it to the ceiling. Then clip the tail off of the zip tie. You continue adding zip ties down the length of the wiring until it is completely secure. Additionally, breaker panel covers must be installed if wires are exposed. As long as the wires are not exposed and covers are installed on the individual breakers, there is no need to install a door if one is not present. If the panel is in place but breakers are missing, individual breaker covers are required to be snapped into place on the cover. The third safety hazard location to look at is the stairways. All stairways with three or more treads must have a single handrail present. If a handrail is not present, you will need to install one. The bracket should be placed on the handrail prior to installing it to the wall. You want to make sure you have an adequate number of brackets on the railing to provide support all the way down the stairs. A bracket should be at least every three feet. Once all brackets are placed on the handrail, you will want to line up the handrail on the wall and then place screws through all the holes of all brackets. If you do not hit a stud with the screws, you will want to drill in anchors to ensure the handrail is secure. Anchors are installed by marking the location of the holes with the screws and then swinging the bracket out of the way so you can drill the anchors into the holes. You should use a common zip drive wall anchor. 
Once the anchors are drilled in, swivel the bracket back into place and screw the screws in. If the side opposite from the handrail has an opening of 24 inches or greater, you must install a guardrail to prevent children from falling. All steps, both inside a property or on the exterior of the property, must be secure and weight-bearing. The steps also must be in compliance with local ordinances. It's important not to cause additional damage to decorative columns or brick at front entries. If there is no way to post up a railing without causing damage, you are required to contact the broker prior to installing. If the broker decides against the installation of handrails or safety rails, you must upload the broker's written confirmation with your update. The fourth safety hazard location is the floor. All floor registers and or vent covers must be present. If a cover is missing, you should try and replace it with a new cover. If the opening is a custom size and cannot be found, the opening must be boarded. Any flooring that is loose and can be considered a trip hazard should be tacked down. An area that is six inches or greater of torn carpet or torn linoleum flooring is considered a trip hazard. The excess material should be cut off and edges should be taped down with commercial grade tape. Holes in the floor must also be boarded and all exposed carpet tack strips, staples, and nails must be removed. To ensure safety to the entire house, you must also address safety locations that include the porch, deck, patio, and or fencing of the property. As stated earlier on the interior portion, you must confirm that the exterior steps are intact and safe. A handrail must also be installed if there are three or more risers present. Any holes on the deck, patio, or porch must be repaired or boarded. If there are any nails, screws, or fasteners raised from the deck, porch, or patio, secure them to prevent someone from tripping or stepping on them. The sixth safety hazard location to look at is the lawn. While on the exterior of the property and performing lawn maintenance, keep an eye out for any holes. There may be holes that could cause harm to an unaware person. Any trip hazards present in the lawn must be addressed. If there are vines along the ground, they should be trimmed back and removed from the property. Stumps in the lawn do not constitute a trip hazard and should be left alone. Additionally, any openings to the property or the property's outbuildings must be secured. Examples of these are holes in the back of the outbuilding, an outbuilding that is missing a window, a missing garage man door, or a dog door. If a garage door is missing, check your work order to determine what the client requires. All exterior entrances to the property, garage, outbuilding, or pool gates must be secured with a padlock. This includes exterior facing utility closets and crawl space doors. In some cases, the broker may have already secured these entrances. If this was completed prior to arrival, there is no need to resecure. To learn more about installing padlocks, View the Securing with Padlocks course. The seventh safety hazard location to look at is the interior and exterior ceilings and walls. All loose objects must be secure. This includes cabinets, drawers, and countertops. Any hanging debris, including drywall, wallpaper, tile, clotheslines, and so forth, should be removed or resecured. Additionally, all hooks, nails, curtain hangers, screws, and so on must be removed from the walls, ceilings, and doors of the entire property. This includes the interior, exterior, garages, and outbuildings. When removing hardware from the walls, use a claw hammer or a pry bar. Always place removed hardware in the trash so you keep the floor clear of debris. If removing staples or small nails, a pair of diagonal pliers may be easier to use. You want to try and do as little damage as possible when removing hardware. Also make sure to read the client's work order in regards to smoke detectors and carbon dioxide detectors as their requirements differ from one another. It is important for you to know and understand local and state ordinances when it comes to smoke detector installation. If smoke detectors are present, you must test them. If they are inoperable, the battery should be replaced. If discoloration is found when you arrive at the property, Make sure you check the client work order to determine what is required and how to proceed. It is important to report any and all environmental issues present at the property in order to notify the client.
All exterior dryer vent covers must be secured to the home and the interior opening must be covered with duct tape. All exposed water lines must be capped with the appropriate sized caps. This refers to all refrigerator lines, interior water valves, washer hookups, water heater valves, and dishwasher lines. If the water is off at the property, still cap all exposed water lines in the event the water is turned on at the property. You need to ensure damage will not occur. The eighth and final safety hazard location is any pools and or hot tubs located on the premise. It is critical that you read and understand the client's expectations as to whether there is an allowable or a bid requirement. The perimeter of a pool and or hot tub must be properly secured to prevent access or injury. Ensure any gate that could allow access has a padlock. To learn more about ensuring pools are secured properly, check out the Securing Pools course. I hope you found this course to be helpful. As an additional resource in identifying safety hazards at a property, be sure to utilize the Safety Hazards Checklist document available to you under Training Materials in Vendor Web, as well as on the Vendor Resource Center. To learn more about how to complete initial services, view our additional securing courses.